Hey everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Blog Chat with National Parks Tonight. Hi, I'm, Matt, I'm Matt Hill, and this is Tim Cooper. Hi, everybody. We're going to give everybody a moment to hop into the live room. Uh, again, we're on about a 20 second delay, but we want your questions. Please drop your questions in either the live chat, which is to the right of the video, or in the comments down below the video. If you're watching this after the live stream, you'll only be able to use the comments below the video. If you drop your comments there, your questions there, we'll see them and we will answer them because we love them. So tonight I have the inimitable Tim Cooper with me. I say inimitable because my gosh, I admire his light painting so much and that's the topic oh, of discussion tonight. Welcome, Tim. I can't wait to learn from you tonight. Thanks. I'm happy to be doing this. It's a ton of fun. It is. It is. It's almost as fun as crawling around on your hands and knees in the dark light painting, isn't it? <laughs> you remember that story, don't you? <laughs> oh, fondly. <laughs> fondly. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. So yeah. what what got you light painting in the first place? What Do you remember the first time you, you did the act of light painting? I do. You know, I learned it back in school, uh, you know, back in the er early 90s. And um, at that point, we were just playing with flashlights in the bathroom or the kitchen, you know, you had reflective, uh, uh, you know, pots and pans or porcelain or something. And I was never very good at it. As a matter of fact, I was terrible at it, but uh, uh, some of my classmates were quite good. And, um, uh, but that's where I first started. And of course you'll remember in film, it was very hard, right? Because you had to wait for a day to see what the results are. And now, boy, you know, you just, you take that picture and, and suddenly you're just, yeah, a painting and you're like oh that's not quite right I'll do it again and do it again and you're able to you know create a masterpiece in, in, in short order so yeah how lucky are we oh I yeah you know I, I feel so old when I say oh back in the day you know we had to do it with film walking both ways up the hill in the snow but uh it's really true I mean when it comes to night photography it's really really true yeah yeah, yeah we we I I feel nothing but gratitude that we got to learn the hard way i'll say that and then yeah. experience the the gratitude of knowing that right now it's easier than it's ever been to get it right yep cheers to that i i couldn't agree with you yeah i'm, I'm really glad we had to learn it the hard way for sure yeah. uh, yep. so you wrote a blog post uh back in 2016 that was so mm. good that we're going back to talk about it again because the the topic itself is is evergreen and ever present Mm -hmm. um, it was titled A Guide to Getting Started with the Art of Light Painting. And this is part one of two. Uh, yeah, maybe even three. I'm not quite sure. Maybe two. Yeah. Wow. No, maybe so, you're right. It might be two. But So I, I think, I mean, I bet you there's going to be some crossover. We might talk about part two a little bit, but maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Um, I'm going to start to share that so we can walk our way through it. Cool. Um, so... Let's take a peek. I'm going to zoomify the screen a little bit here. Zoom, zoom. Uh, there we go. Now we can see the words a little bit better. Um, how do you define light painting? Well, yeah, actually, you know, that's a really good question because I was just talking uh, uh, with a friend I met in uh, Fort Worth and uh, we were talking about the um, <clears throat> Uh, the idea of light writing versus light painting and um, light painting to me is adding light to a scene illuminating a subject that already exists and so when I think about light painting what I really think about is the ambient light that's present and a subject that is dark um, I think Gabriel often calls it shadow painting or something to that effect but I consider when you're adding light to a subject that's dark that is light painting, whether it's done with a flashlight or whether it's done with uh, uh, any variety of light, you know, light painting tools um, that uh, that's light painting. And that's different, I think, from light writing, which is starting with a blank space and using the light itself to draw into the frame of film or sensor, as it would be these days. So, yeah, adding light to a subject is light painting. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And, and when you turn your light source towards the camera, then you're scribing, you're lighting with right. Exactly. You're right. writing with light. That, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think it makes sense, but I think it's going to take a while for us for that to catch on. A lot of people I agree. Yeah. A lot oh, of people I, don't get that distinction. 
I, yeah, I agree. It's, it is a catch all term right now and, and that's fine. It's just, we, we as a group make that distinction. Um, and we think it's, I, I think it's clearer to talk about it that way and start conversations that way. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. agreed. Agreed. I want to share the first picture in your blog post because sure. when I look at this picture, uh, it's, it's so hard to tell that any unnatural light, and I mean, mm. not naturally occurring light occurred during this exposure. And that's where I think what I, what I call your mastery happens. Mm. Um, it's, it's so it's gracious and it's, uh, it's believable. So I, I want to pass that along to you because I, I admire, wasn't I here for this shot? Actually, no, Lance was. Lance and I were working on this, uh, I think either at the same time or right one after another, we'd scouted this and found it. We're like, oh, we've got to get back here and you know, we got to paint this tree. Um, but what's interesting is the whole entire foreground. Um, let's see, can I annotate? I think that I can. Where can we side by side? No, I'm not seeing it at the moment, but um, the whole foreground itself is all dark completely pitch black. So we're all behind of, all of this, yeah, all of that, all of that in there. Thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, oh, there's my annotate. So <clears throat> everything back in the background, it was lit by full moonlight. And so that's what I call the ambient exposure. And so if we walked up and I can't recall exactly what the settings were here, I believe it was somewhere in around 30 seconds because the stars are almost little points there. So uh, somewhere around 30 seconds, um, would give you that light on the distant mountain and the light in the sky. It was a full moon rising or uh, probably setting in this case. And uh, yeah, so the whole foreground was dark. So any light that is in the foreground has been added by a flashlight. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. I'm going to assume that as we go through this, I'm turning off the annotation so I can go with, as we go through this post, we'll get to learn more about this. So ISO 800, 60 seconds, 14 to 24, 2, 8 Nikon lens and a D4 and your coast. Yes. It's so yeah. simple. Yeah. It doesn't take it, a lot, right? It doesn't take a lot. It just takes a lot of, it takes a lot of time and practice, but to actually make the image, you do not need a whole lot of tools. You know, it's everything you already have, just throw in a flashlight and, uh, and you can start light painting. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So so let's see you said that where, where where do you commonly choose to light paint in what situations well you know i you know i personally find for me that i try to light paint everything uh simply because i, I know i know i know you know i know night photography is in a lot of people's view about uh, photographing the sky and a lot of people know planets and stars and clusters and all these things. I really don't know anything about that. I just happen to find the night sky is a beautiful backdrop <laughs> for what I wanted to do. So, you know, my favorite shoots are always shoots that I can add in light painting too. So uh, I think, you know, Matt, I think I really did get my start, uh, much like yourself, um, in the studio, right? Mm -hmm. And I felt like when, you know, we were shooting up against the backdrop and you had to mold the light and, and make the light happen, you know, key light, kicker light, fill light. Um, and you were actually creating the light for that set. That's very much the way I approach light painting. And so I've got, you know, a backdrop, whatever that might be. And I'm going to illuminate that with one light. That's the ambient light. And then everything else has to be designed. So, uh, so I really try to, I try to do it in every situation. I, I've, you know, uh, painted with light in very bright city scenes um, or all the way to uh, new moon, uh, you know, out in the, out in the, where everything is completely dark um, to, you know, working in from full moon to, you know, partial moon too. And those are probably the easiest. Partial moon is probably about the easiest to do. But, uh, but yeah, I, I try to do it everywhere, every time, as long as it's dark. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> now, I, there's in this blog post, you have um, something in a reformatory oh yeah yes mansfield mansfield Re reformatory yeah this is actually solitary confinement inside the prison that um shawshank redemption was filmed in they didn't really get down here but uh but yeah this is actual uh solitary confinement and wow. so so the picture on the left 
shows the light coming in at the end of the hallway from one, you know, like a single light. Um, and it's, you know, pretty long exposure if I remember correctly. But um, <clears throat> I wanted to show that, uh, what do we got? Okay, 60 seconds, not that terribly long. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to show that there was light at the end of the tunnel. But at the same time, if I did that, then the whole foreground, as you can see, is completely dark. And, um, but I wanted to show, you know, I wanted the idea of coming, something coming out of the solitary confinement, some sort of light. Um, and so, yeah, so here's a perfect situation where it was the middle of the day. It just happened to be in a dark area and I was able to light paint. Um, so Wait a second, you light painted during the day? Yes, I did. Yes, sometimes I take my camera out during the day. It is true. That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. That's true. This is brilliant. It's brilliant. You were you're balancing the contrast in the scene. It's just natural and artful. I love it. Oh, thanks. Yeah. It's and it again, it always just goes back for the people that are watching that maybe have never light painted before. It just goes back to the ambient light versus what you add in. So you could always walk into, say, a dark cellar or an attic or something where there's one light coming in. And if you get a good exposure where uh, the light on the wall or the light on the window looks good, the rest of the space is completely dark. Now, yep. at that point, all you have to do is take that exposure again and just add in some light with a flashlight. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, and, and that's what happened here. And, and like Gabe said, you were shadow painting because uh, you do that all the time in, in your shots there. You have, you have a <laughs> fingerprint of casting shadows so meticulously and deliberately. Uh, and well, you know what? I, I first I first started doing that, I think in Zion. And I think it's a really simple trick for people to understand um, that if I have a piece of uh, say a rod or you know a stairwell or something like that here, and if my flashlight is going like this around, then the shadow on the other side is getting softer and getting splayed out. But if I take that piece of metal, in this case, one of the bars of the prison, and I take my flashlight and just do this and keep it in one spot, you end up with a very hard edged shadow. So whenever I'm trying to make those shadows, it's just a matter of taking the flashlight and leaving it in the same position and twisting it and spinning it rather than doing this. This will create a soft light. No, that's so, it. It's it's like the 3D version. If you don't have a soft box, like we're thinking going back to studio photography, the larger uh, the light source and the closer it is, the softer exactly. the effect, right? When you move your yeah. flashlight around, you're creating a soft box by yes. moving, making your light source larger. Yeah. So you're softening shadows just like a diffusion source would. Absolutely. So for those of you that have ever spent any time in a studio or maybe even had your picture taken, um, typically you might be in front of a large umbrella, say this big. Um, well, if you want that kind of light source with your flashlight, all you have to do is take your flashlight and fill in that whole spot. And the, the flashlight now becomes a flash, a large, soft source. But holding it in one spot, it becomes a very hard edged light, uh, Just defining uh, like dark, it. hard shadows. This. Now, like we have, we, I see a question from the field. Okay. Um, it was from Byron. Hey Tim, during that 30, that 30, 60 second exposure that you have mm -hmm. there, yep. how long do you, if you remember, did you have the flashlight on? Uh, probably I would say maybe about 40 seconds, only enough time for me to get in the scene, find my way around where I wanted to stand, then turn it on and then paint in many different directions. So the shadows are caused by me standing pretty much right inside the prison bars, uh, inside the cell, pointing out. So that was probably 15 or 20 seconds. But then for the other 15 or 20 seconds, I was painting inside the room itself, right. pointing back away from the bars to flood the room with a little soft light mm. um, and just moving it around in various ways within. I yeah. love how you stayed away from the left edge of your frame and you left a little shadow where it makes contact with the edge there. I think that was really important. Thanks, and that pure happenstance on that one. Thank you, but that was pure <laughs> happenstance, yeah. I, I, stop, I wanna believe everything you do is deliberate. Just stop. <laughs> okay. Like like this, I mean, I need to see this in another by itself. Sure. Tell me more about this image. Well, this was, uh, this is 
just outside of DC in Virginia, and we were teaching some um, some night classes and some light painting classes there. And this is actually a full moon. And so I know a lot of people won't even go out and try to do night photography because there's no stars or very few stars under a full moon. And me, I'm thinking, oh man, this is a great time because I can mix the ambient light with, again, the light painting. So this is a full moon coming up on kind of a foggy night. So you can see the distance there is a little bit of fog. So that, uh, um, uh, that ambient, the ambiance of the fog, I think really helped. But basically this, this uh, uh, what do you call it? Pergola, I'm not even sure what this thing is called, but the- Pagoda? Pagoda, yeah, um, is completely dark. So any light you see in here is from the flashlight. Uh, the, the whole scene looks like the distant uh, tree line. It's that dark. Wow. Um, yeah. And so this was painted from many, many different angles. And I think that's one of the keys. And I always kind of take my cue from um, Hollywood. Um, I think I think my type of light painting is a little bit more uh, uh, film-like rather than some of the other folks that we have in our crew. And uh, some people look a little bit more natural. Mine looks a little bit more like... Like if I was to light this with a series of lights that would stay up all the time, this is kind of how I would light it, you know? Um, so this is me moving around from lots of different positions. Um, so let's see if I have my annotate on. So uh, let me get this on here real quick. Um, so the light in here has been added from the right-hand side, camera right. Um, and you could see it's, it's a, the gel here is kind of neutral. The flashlight's kind of neutral. Um, then what I did was I went in and painted from this side to light the column. And you can see how the, the, where the source of light is here. But this has also got another light. And you can see the specular highlight right on the edge of that column right there. Um, then there was another bit of light where I painted the, uh, uh, the bell itself. Um, very, very, very little fill light just in here. And then what I would do is lay kind of on my back or get down low and hide the flashlight and then point it straight up and paint these areas in here so it'd have a little bit of illumination. And then I stood way back out here and painted up here just a little bit so I could get some fill light in there. So a lot of the, um, a lot of the light painting comes from using, uh, spending diff different amounts of time on each subject or each area of the subject so that you're not flooding it with one entire light, but you have lots of different intensities from several different angles. And of course, every subject's a little bit different, but this one is, this one just happens to be pretty intricate. So I wanted to paint it from, from many different angles. Hey, Tim, how do you hide your flashlight? Why, why can't I see it on the lens? Ah, well, I don't always do so well with that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, the darn good question. A lot of people have that question. Um, the thing is, is that you always have to stand or you always have to hide the flashlight from the camera. So if the camera is off to my right, I've got to hide the flashlight behind my chest this way. The moment that I move and the camera can now see the tip of the flashlight, you begin light writing, <laughs> which is not what I'm wanting to do in this case. Right. So it's a lot of hiding the flashlight behind your body, covering it up a lot of times as you're walking around, turning it off as you're walking around. Um, uh, lots of things like uh, any way you can hide the flashlight from, uh, from the camera seeing it. Now, I'm not being seen because I'm not standing still long enough to be seen. So imagine everybody, I'm sure everybody out there has done images where you ghost yourself and you know, you let's say it's a four second exposure, you stand still for two seconds and then whew, you move out. Well, if that was me in the, under the full moon, I would literally have to be standing there for half of the exposure, just frozen in order to become a ghost. So oh, the I fact thought that, that you, Zoom choked for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that, you know, you move in like this, you're moving through the scene, you're just not seen at all. Yeah. Now, if the flashlight hits you as you're moving through the scene, you're being illuminated now and you will see that. So it does, yeah, it does take some practice. Uh, it does take some practice uh, uh, using uh, light, um, you know, hiding the light from the camera. I, uh, you have one other trick that, that's in your bag of ninja tricks. Ooh, uh, okay. Don't you bring a ball cap with you? Oh yeah, 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 I do. I, I a lot of times I'll use a ball cap because uh, part of the, part of the appeal for me with light painting is to get this unreal kind of light that can't happen any other way. Um, 
And part of the beauty of light painting is casting a hard shadow. Um, so if I wanna cast, like if I wanna paint a pathway or a walkway uh, that's coming towards the camera, if I painted it from the side, there would be very little definition and texture in that. But if you're the camera and I'm walking towards you with the flashlight with it pointed down, now all the shadows are coming towards you. And as you look at that, it's like, wow, okay, there's a lot of contrast going on. The problem is, is you see the camera. So I just take off my ball cap and hide the front of the camera and then move it towards. Yeah. Sandra was asking in the chat, um, do you think it's advisable to wear all black clothing or do you have an opinion? Uh, I always wear almost all black clothing. Yep, absolutely. And um, when it's cold, it's, it's nice because you always wear black gloves, which also helps hide the light. But um, yes, black top, black pants. I remember, uh, and Gabriel will remember this too. We had, a, we had one of our students working with us um, and we were doing a group light painting project, which is uh, pretty common on our workshops. And uh, this guy was wearing khakis. And they were just light enough that the light bouncing off the bus was bouncing back on his khakis and we could see his khakis being ghosted. Oh so, <laughs> yeah. So if you wear black, it's, it's a much better way to go. Yep. Kind of oh like, my, Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I got, when, when Lance and I went to Morocco last year, <laughs> I, I, I haven't used it the way I want to yet, but I got myself a black full body jalaba. So Ooh, nice. So I have my light painting robe with a huge oh, hood and like oh. I get like I can't wait to use that the right way for light. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Oh, so uh in your blog posts, which mm -hmm. I'm going to go back and share the screen now. You sure. had a wonderful set of starting tips. Um mm. Maybe we should uh, walk our way through these and see sure. if we have covered all of these. Um, so yeah, let's walk through. It's really, it's really pretty simple, you know. And, and I think for again for people that are just getting started, um, uh, everybody wants a workflow. And I think if we work at this from a common sense uh, kind of standpoint, it'll make sense. So decide what lens to use. Well, of course you have to come up with your composition so you know what you're photographing and what you want to light paint and what you want to not light paint and leave alone. So that, that first lens choice is, is really pretty important. Um, and then much like any other photograph that you would take, whether it's at night or the middle of the day, you've got to think about your depth of field. You know, Can you make the shot wide open at, at F4 and still have depth of field? Maybe you can. Um, but a lot of times with light painting, it's slightly different than just shooting a distant Milky Way because you have a foreground subject. So you might want something more like five, six, or eight. Yep. And gotcha. then, the, yeah, and then the next thing is, is where we all start from our night photography, right? Let's start at 6,400. That's our test exposure. It could be our Milky Way shot, but it's also our test exposure. It kind of gives us an idea of where to begin. Um, and so start at 6,400, find your ambient light. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the main thing. And I can see here that we've written talking about a matrix meter. So again, this is for, you know, for beginners working under something like moonlight, you can kind of use your matrix meter and come up and sneak up on an ambient exposure. You know, you might start at 10 seconds, it's too dark, 20 seconds, it's too dark, 30 seconds, you're like, oh yeah, that's great. Um, but if you're starting it at 6,400, the nice thing is you're more likely to be doing a half a second or a quarter of a second, um, maybe one second. Um, so then uh, the idea is, let's see, where are we up to next? You think five. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, what we're going to do next is make sure the scene is just slightly underexposed. And, and I, I kind of hesitate to say that. And I've almost stopped teaching that because I found that people tend to darken their images too much. But what we don't want is it to look like daylight if we're going to be light painting. True. So, you know, uh, you know, some people say get a good exposure and then minus one. I say get a good exposure that looks right, which means it's a little bit darker than what you would want. And I think that's a better formula. Okay. Um, so now let's say, you know, my test exposure at ISO 6400 rendered the moonlit uh, background of that pagoda quite nicely. Well, two seconds isn't gonna give me nearly enough time to go in and light paint. So that's when we do our 600 rule and whatever equals 6400 uh, uh, seconds at 6,400 equals minutes at ISO 100. So two, two seconds at 6,400 would be two minutes 
at ISO 100. The ambient light will be exactly the same, but I'll have two minutes to run around and light paint my scene. Mm -hmm. Got to have that when you're light painting. You need you need that breathing room. Got to have time. Yeah. And then I think this is really the most important part, Matt, is so many people are just looking for an answer like, well, how long do I light paint for? And there is no answer. And I remember Gabriel telling me that when I first started out, um, you know, Gabe, I'm like, Gabe, how long should I point my flashlight at this? And he's like, oh, I can't tell you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It's true, you know, are you doing wood? Are you doing metal? Are you painting rocks? Are you painting? Everything has got a different re reflectivity and uh, you just don't, you don't know. So all you do is you know your ambient exposure. So off the example we just worked on, we're now at two minutes at whatever aperture we're at, say five, six. Um, and I'm just going to go, psh, I'm just going to flash my flashlight around and walk back and look at it. Did I paint too much? Huh, back it off. Now I'll do it for less than that or not enough. I do it for more than that. And, and that's it. Once you've established your ambient exposure, it's just experimenting with the light painting. And, it's, and you got to experiment a lot. You know, I remember when we were shooting that tree in the beginning, Lance and I at least went through, oh gosh, 15 or 20 different shots, just coming back, painting it, doing it again, painting it, doing it again and looking, you know, and we both just went through shot after shot after shot after shot to get the light painting right. So it's, it's nothing where we step up and paint it in one shot and walk away and go, oh, yeah, yeah look how good we are. Yeah. Speak for yourself. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no that's, that's not me. That's not me. That's not me. <laughs> that is not that's the way it things, right? Yeah. It's threw a me a softball there. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Nope. Lots <laughs> of practice and experiment over and over and over again. Uh, how, how do you know how long you are light painting? How do you keep time? <sighs> Count in my head. Yeah, I really do. No, it's like, okay, 1001, 1002, and then next place, 1001, 1002. And I think, you know, again, not to go back to this, but for those of us that used to work in the dark room, you know, burning and dodging, it was nothing to count time in my head as right. I was making prints. And so it kind of comes naturally to me. Plus, I'm a little bit OCD and I count everything steps, beans in the jars, you know, oh, yeah. I just, you never yeah, shared I, that with me. <laughs> I thought it was rather obvious, but, you know. <laughs> God, that reminds me of something I've never really shared with anybody. Should I? <laughs> I had this thing like, like when my parents were driving in the car, every time we'd pass into a shadow, I'd click my teeth together Ooh. and we'd let go of the shadow. I'd release my teeth. I did that for oh. years before I broke the wow. habit. So I, I think I was a little OCD at one point in my life too. Yeah. There, now everybody knows. Yeah. I'm all the time counting cards, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have uh, a favorite flashlight that you use? Yes, uh, my Coast HP7, I think is my favorite flashlight. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, it's pretty powerful, um, which I think works really well for uh, full moon or partial moon light painting. Right. Um, the HP5 is a little less powerful um, and that works really nice for when you're wanting to paint uh, during the Milky Way or star point shots when it's much darker because it's a lot less powerful. Gotcha. Um, but between the two, you know, those are those are the two flashlights I like best for sure. Uh, and then, of course, our Luxley light. Love yeah. that. And um, for those of you that don't know what that is, that's a light panel that can stay on in a constant way. Um, and you can set it up. And what I'll often do is set it up as a fill light just to add some light to the scene. And then I'll go around with my flashlight and add in all the highlights that I want to the scene. That's cool, man. It's, yeah. it's so fun to have different tools like the, yeah. what you know, what do they say when, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Oh, that's right. the truth. Yeah, that's the truth of it. So you, you need like a ball, ball peen hammer and you need like the one where you can drive home, you know, a 10 penny yep. nail with one shot. You need, yep. you need different kinds of flashlights. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and it, you know, it's interesting when people come to our workshops, they think, oh, you know, we'll, we've brought a flashlight, we're covered. And then after a while they realize, oh, wait, yeah, you know, I can't get that close. So I need a more powerful flashlight or it's yeah. too dark. This flashlight's way too powerful. So, you know, we get into it and, uh, you know, start to gain more tools and uh, have more ability to do different things. I think we'll save it for next time, but I know that you have, uh, you figured out how to gel flashlights the right way too. Yes. Because they're not always the right color. No, 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 no. And color is real important. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to take pictures in color, then we should probably pay attention to color. And, you know, we generally don't, you know, right. a lot of, a lot of times we don't. And so, yeah, very few flashlights are right on the mark. And so I've spent some time testing the coasts so that I can get them back to neutral so that when we set our white balance correctly for our night photography, 
um, we can get a neutral light out of our flashlight or even a warm light. And so, yeah, we should definitely talk about that next time. Tell you what, for those people watching this, we will put that in the comments on the video on YouTube so you can go find it. Um, but we will address this live next time uh, and we'll, we'll talk about it uh, or in the future. Uh, we have one more point from your blog post that we should finish. Your, your final point was this, if you're working in a bright area, uh, yeah. And that that's happened to me in the cities and stuff during long exposures or even, um, uh, sometimes at dusk, you know, if I'm putting on say a neutral density filter and trying to extend time in that way, um, light can creep in the back of some cameras. Some cameras are much worse than others, by the way. And I, I can't tell you which ones suffer from it, but if you know, you're in a city and you've got light coming in the back, you know, like a street light and you're pointing out into the darkness and you extend a very long exposure, there is chances that you will see that light edging into the frame um, on one side or the other. And so it's just something to be careful for. A lot of cameras will have that little switch that you can just kind of close up that eyepiece during the exposure. I have one thing to add to that. In, mm, the, in the age of mirrorless cameras, mm -hmm. this will not apply. This does apply to DSLRs where the light comes in through the pentaprism and bounces down over kind of around the mirror to hit the sensor. Mm -hmm. But mirrorless lens cameras, this doesn't affect it. I've never mm -hmm. seen it affect it. So. Oh, good. Because this, this came from shooting with my brownie. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I bring my 11 by 14 out into the field, <laughs> I always got to put the dark slide back in afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Too wow. Too so we, we have a little bit more here. Um, Painting the scene. Mm. Yes. So, you know, the, the thing about the experimentation, uh, I think is uh, really needs to be thought about in a way that, uh, you know, bring it back to regular photography, right? So what I mean by that is, uh, or, or basic photographic techniques is what I'm saying. So for example, if you're at F8 and you have one power flashlight, it's going to let X amount of light in. If you are at five, six, that same flashlight for the same amount of time is going to let twice as much light in. If you open it up to F4, even more light, right? So that's why it's really important to think about your ISO and your aperture as allowing the amount of light in. Time is the other thing. And when we think about our normal and basic uh, uh, exposure triangle, for example, you know, we're thinking, the ISO is the sensitivity of the sensor. The aperture is the amount of light that's coming through. And the shutter is how long is the shutter open to let that light come through. Well, in night photography, when light painting, basically you're imagining that the shutter's just open and it's staying open. So we almost take that out of the equation. So then really the two things that matter for the intensity of light on the subject itself is uh, the aperture, you know, 22, five, six, and, um, and then the ISO. So if we're at 6,400 and we're test painting at 6,400, it's gonna seem so bright, it's gonna blow everything out. Go back to 100, paint for that same amount of time, you won't even see that there's been a flashlight added to the scene. So, so yeah, and typically on moon, you know, moon filled nights, we're more at five, six, maybe eight. Um, and so suddenly that very powerful flashlight loses some of its power simply because the aperture is smaller. So I think that's what I was alluding to there. Yep. 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 Is there, and I, I guess as a, as a wrap here, the, what, how do you feel about making mistakes? Do you have, do you have an opinion about mistakes? Um, well, you know, there's old, the old saying, of course, if you don't make mistakes, you're not learning. And I find that to be very true in light painting. Um, basically everything is a mistake until, the final piece, which, uh, well you know, as, uh, yeah, as, as, yeah. as I referred to back before on the tree where Lance and I were working, yeah, I think I did it at least 15 times. So I made 14 mistakes until I finally got it right. And so with light painting, that's it. I mean, it's just going to be a series of mistakes or practice, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not so worried about that. With light painting, you got to be bold and you got to experiment, you know, and also what I recommend is really looking at light. Um, I think I started off the article by saying composition and uh, learning light are both lifelong journeys. You 
you always learn on both of those, whether it's com composing or, or light, you will continue to learn for the rest of your life. And so when I first started, all I could, oh, it drove me nuts for, for months. All I, I looked at every magazine cover, every film, every picture, everything. And I examined the light and I'm like, is that hard light? Is it soft light? Where's the light coming from? What are the shadows doing? Da, da, da. You know, I basically almost put myself in asylum because I couldn't turn it <laughs> off. But, um, but it, you know, it, 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 once you start paying attention to it, then you start to recognize it and you start to emulate it and you can recreate it. So I think it's real important for everybody out there to pay attention to light and look at it and try to figure out what it is. Here's, I have, I you just brought up a memory of mine I haven't had in a long, long time. Um, when I was in college, I started working at CNR Braun. I worked for Braun Color. Oh, oh yeah, cool, right? I and uh, one of the, one of the guys I work with, Andre Costantini, uh, he and I used to pick up PDN magazine uh -huh. and challenge each other to describe exactly how each of the photographs was lit in it. Perfect. And we worked in a warehouse, so we would pull out these multi-thousand dollars in our lights and, and recreate those scenes yeah. for fun but you could do the same thing with a flashlight that's what we're talking about with light painting is yes. multi-dimensional lighting and looking at photographs as you see and imagining how you would do it looking for the shadows looking for the specularity and putting yourself into a mindset of breaking down what's in front of you and looking for the craft mm. yeah yeah agreed yeah, it's just brilliant. And I, I think uh, you you and I enjoyed something that was, just, it was a, a real gift was like choosing an education in commercial photography. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, Agreed. It's, 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 it's enriched my life for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and I, and, and that study of light, it's not going to be just good for your flashlight and night photography people, you know, it is really going to be right. I mean, that, isn't it true? I mean, it's oh, like, absolutely. Yeah. It's like, it's going to inform every other aspect of your photography, no matter what you do without a doubt, even how I lit myself for this live stream. Oh yeah, look at this. <laughs> right? I mean, there's, there's no shine on my glasses, right? Oh, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. Oh man, we, we've had a really, <laughs> really, really uh, active live chat during this. Oh, good, excellent. I, wa I wanna call out um, all of the people who came and have had a super amazing, interesting conversation in the chat. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. We hope it continues in the comments. But the one thing that jumped out at us was, well, Gabe just made a video asking how many hats do I have? Yeah, that was just a couple of days ago. I love it, yeah. And, and unintentionally, I just, I just started, I, I just got my shirt. I don't want to do it real quick. I just had all of the patches I've been collecting over the last five years, finally got the rest of them put onto my shirt. And we've decided that we're going to have a similar contest to what Gabe did, was he, he awarded um, somebody, some things. If yeah, people can guess how many patches are on mm. my shirt. Mm. So, all right. So we will, we will post this contest someplace shortly but you guys are the first to hear it guess how many patches i have <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one the, i do this not not out of pride this is I, my rule is i can't buy a patch unless i've made a photograph in that place at night so i've been some Ooh. places where i haven't bought a patch because i wasn't shooting at night Ooh, that's strict yeah not even a daytime visit not even a daytime visit nope Nope. If, sometimes if I know I'm not going to come back for years, I'll buy the patch, but I won't allow myself to put it on the shirt until I shoot there at night. I don't gosh. know. I mean, I, oh I'm weird. Gosh. I'm weird. Uh, forget about my shirt. Tim, you're amazing. Ah. I don't, you, I'm not buttering your bread here. I have admired your craft for years. It's an honor mm -hmm. to work with you. Um, it's a delight to learn from you. Um, and I thank you. Thank you so much for sharing oh, your craft tonight. Oh, and your, your passion you. for education is, is wonderful too. So thank ah, you. Yeah. Ton of fun. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. Um, and thanks everybody for coming. You guys, you're the reason yeah. we do this. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I don't see any other questions right now. Okay. Um, so all we got to say is thank you so much guys. We will see you next time. There is a couple of things we're going to ask you on the way out. 
if this is the first time you're seeing us, please hit the subscribe button mm -hmm. and hit the reminder bell next to it here on YouTube. Please go to our website and sign up for the blog because some people like to read in addition to watching. Mm -hmm. And we put a lot of effort into our blog posts. Uh, so if you go to nationalparksatnight.com or the short version is npan.co slash blog, those links will be in the description. Uh, as well as links to the original blog post that Tim was talking about here. Um, yeah, and all the other stuff we do, we'd love to see you there. We do events and other stuff like that and workshops. And most all of all, we just love, things. yeah, we love talking about night photography and we love talking to each other. So um, here we are talking to each other. Thank you, uh, Tim. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Anything else you want to say? No, no. All right. We love you all. Uh, I'm going to show a picture on the way out so everybody can see one of Tim's masterpieces. Uh, and we're going to, uh, then we're going to close on that. And you guys are absolutely amazing. We will see you next time. See you next time.